but you want to then use that extra energy to try and transform the system, transform yourself first, and then build another system, uh, a parallel to the one that's collapsing, which if you don't, then guess what? When that one collapses, it's too late. It's going to fall right on your head. And when the supermarkets are shut and you're running around picking dandelion leaves in the street and people want to eat your kids, then, you know, th 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 then, I mean, getting fresh water is just a huge thing, David. I, I gave one a mem member of my family this morning. I put some uh, water from the tap and squeezed it in a plastic bottle so they could smell it. And they said, it's like the swimming pool. I said, it is the swimming pool. Hello, good evening. As promised, here we are again on Outside the Box. I'm Jason Leo Satis. My guest this evening is David Dubine. You can find David on 20, uh, Adapt2030 on YouTube, oilseedcrops.org. Um, this, uh, David, is the culmination of a great, um, we, we've had a week with tip doc, uh, Professor Tim Ball, who uh, is talking about climate change or the lack of climate change. To David, I'm delighted with David's work. I've uh, been watching David's work for a while. Amazing guest. David, listen, thanks for uh, joining me tonight. Really appreciate you coming. Glad you're having me on. We had a couple of really good pre-conversations before we're coming into the interview, and it's all about understanding the changes that are happening and what we can expect moving into the future, because if you understand how the past grand solar minimums unfurled and what happened in society during these times of reduced food output because of cycles of the sun, then we have a really good blueprint moving forward into 2023, 24 the global awakening and awareness of this uh, grand solar minimum and how it's going to happen. And then if you know all this, you can come at it with understanding instead of fear. You can make better choices. So, you know, what we've seen over this last week with these record snows across not only Sweden, Russia, United States, Canada, and this is just the beginning. It's only, you know, the last day of September, first day of October, just a week after summer. And they're having four feet of snow in places. This is truly unprecedented. I was surprised in the mainstream media in the United States that they were calling it unprecedented, historical, using these types of adjectives in mainstream publications. So it had to be the granddaddy of granddaddies for them to use that kind of lexicon and news headlines. <laughs> Magnificent, David. It, this is wonderful because um, you're one of the very few people I know that speak about the whole thing. Um, just a quick thing for people. Um, because a lot of my guests think, oh gosh, here we go, it's the climate change thing. Well, guess what? Um, it's good news. Don't. This is going to be a positive show because let's let's be honest. Ignorance is, is not. <laughs> ignorance is very silly. If you're in a prison and you're being herded like an animal, and other people in the prison are saying to you, hey, listen, guess what? I can explain it to you, and I can explain how it all works. People like David Debine, and this is what's going to happen. This is what's happened before. We can change the timeline, you know. Uh, everything that's happening around us now, let's not forget, other than the climate and things like that doing what it wants to, is a consequence, a feedback loop of things that have taken place before with wisdom and vision or with stupidity and um, ignorance. So this is a very good news situation we're coming into now with people like David explaining how it all works, you know. And just a quick thing I want to say to people, which is very interesting, it's just not brilliant, but I looked at my uh, show with uh, D Professor Timothy Ball earlier, um, uh, David, as I was telling you, you weren't surprised. And um, suddenly there's this thing on there uh, from Wikipedia saying, oh, climate change, explaining what climate change is, stroke isn't. I thought, whoa, that's interesting. That's never happened to me. No one's ever put that on there before. And then I looked at a Sky News Aussie um, program, which was surprisingly talking about um, uh, the sham of the whole thing. Um, they had one as well. So, you know, it's, it's, it's quite, a, um, I would say, quite a compliment, really, David. <laughs> Well, I look at more of it, a badge of authenticity, a verification that the information we're speaking is truth and that the narrative that they're so desperately holding on to, and when I say they, I talk about global leaders, the IPCC, and these uh, NGOs that want to implement a global tax based on carbon emissions and reduction of your lifestyle. They're trying to hold that narrative so near and dear that they're afraid of any competition. Why are they afraid of us saying that, you know, if it's such a proven science, then why are they afraid of me coming on the channel and saying, hey, it's the sun, and we're repeating cycles? Because, you know, the, you talked about that just a minute ago. The ancient civilizations and the ancient societies left us these messages in their stele, their legends, the myths, the carvings, codices, and whatever, for us to decipher and understand these cycles. 
on a longer term. It's not just, you know, 80 years of climate equals our whole history of civilization. We need to go back hundreds of thousands of years. And for me to be able to say it's the sun, what's so terrifying that they need to say, no, you can't listen to this guy. Look, only Wikipedia can give you the true inf information. Now, just an FYI, personal experience here. I've tried to go on the Wikipedia page for climate change and global warming, and there's a whole bunch there under the climate science pages, and edit those with my own information. Like put in the grand solar minimum inside the global warming, the CO2 page, Within minutes, it's scrubbed. That is the most highly watched page, and the editors of that page that are overseeing it, uh, they scrub anything that doesn't coteau 100% to the narrative. I try to put up a, an ice chart uh, going back and matching up with temperatures with CO2 going back some 25,000 years. And as soon as I put that up, it was a graphic that showed the CO2 follows temperature, not the other way around. But they wouldn't allow that to be up there. And anything I'd ever tried to put was instantly removed. So... There's careful narration, and I should say curation, of that, narr of that Wikipedia page, and no edits are allowed unless it catoes to the narrative. So why is it that they're so hell-bent on putting this narrative into place that will not be changeable, even if new science comes out to disprove or you know, maybe put a slight curveball into that's all CO2, why would they not allow us to uh, even discuss that? Why can it only be, this is it, there's no discussion, don't ask, and if you do, you're in trouble. When you, uh, this is most amazing thing, this climate change, and that's what I want to get get your uh, handle on now before we go into all the the the, the, the details of it, because it's very important. Because people are going to be thinking this, you know. Then if 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 this is so so delicate, this situation, and they 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 don't want anyone to look at this, the question is this, and you'll be able to answer this for me in detail. I can only guess. Why? What is it? Who are they? Profit, it's got to be something like profit, control, depopulation. What are they stopping everyone becoming aware of it for, David? Can you expound on that in the, the great way you do, please, for everybody? And everybody, listen carefully. Don't turn away because this, this is your future. And people who haven't been born yet, you're the midwives now. Who are, Your decisions now and whether you're brave enough to look at this situation is going to help or hinder the future of your children and grandchildren. And by the way, that's why you feel strange inside. It's a symptom of a system that's driving you nuts and lying to you. So, David, can you expound on what is the agenda behind all this? Not to start off, it's just my own opinion. And there's a lot of possible causations going much deeper and much further than what I am about to say. But again, I don't want you to believe me just because I'm talking. You need to do your own research. You need to follow up on you know, keywords that I might talk about, but this is indeed my own opinion. I feel this is the way it's playing out and why. But again, just FYI, do your own research on this as you move forward. The debt system is at the end. We can't go any further with the debt system to grow the global economy. There has to be a reset in finance in terms of fiat currencies as well as a depopulation event. Now, you could try to get that with war, but that would be messy and uh, people would see through the lies because, you know, there's so much social media now and it's really, you know, you saw it happen with Iraq and Afghanistan and, you know, even what's happening with Saudi Arabia now and, and going over with Yemen. People are seeing through and all these citizen reporters, there's no way to really get around it anymore like they did in the 1940s or, in, you know, back uh, turn of the century, last century, you know, World War One, where they could rally nations because there was only newspapers and, you know, there, there's where everybody's breaking through the lies with all the social media and all the internet connectivity. So they can't really force a war like they used to, especially a world war, It'd make no sense. People would be like, stop it. So... In my opinion, they're going to let this grand solar minimum do as much damage as they can. And the purposeful thing that I keep saying again and again, why were they not warning anybody about this event? Like every government on the planet, in my opinion, understands that it's here now. It's intensifying. The crop losses are going to intensify from this year forward. I mean, when we come into the end of this northern hemisphere harvest season, we're already looking at 15 to 20 percent drops in uh, the USDA figures. That's for America. And for the global totals as well, they're looking at massive drops. Somehow the millions and hundreds of millions of tons just disappeared out of carryover stocks. And there's billions of bushels going over here, there, and everywhere. And they were just adding totals to make stabilized markets. So the way I look at the USDA now is not it's not about agriculture. It's a market stabilization tool because when food prices rise, it rips apart the rest of the economy. I mean, if your food price triples, quadruples, 7x like it did in the 1600s across Europe, 7x. I mean, imagine your food price 
seven times higher than it is now. Everything else you would quit spending on, all your money would be diverted into food. Now, with that being said, if the cycles are going to repeat like they have the last five grand solar minimums going back to, you know, the year 79 AD approximately, uh, the same three things occur all the time. The population reduction, population migration, that's with the people. You get the uh, crop losses, for sure, decreased yields. That was one of the main number one things talked about. Everything decreased in terms of food availability, and that's what then diseases and plagues swept in because everybody's immune systems were so low, they weren't eating enough. And then finally, because of all these on top of everything, the economies collapsed everywhere. Everything dropped, literally 9-0, 90% contraction in all these. You know, But there was not as much connectivity back then. There was not so much global trading. There was not so much infrastructure, just-in-time delivery, all these uh, global shipping that we have now. It's quite a different animal we're, we're marching into, but the same basic premise applies. The debt system is finished. There's no way to grow it anymore. They know where they're at the dead end there. There's too many people, according to these people that consider themselves rulers on our planet. There's too many people. I personally don't believe that. We have different systems, wireless power, and you know these types of things we could get magnetic motors and there's many ways to generate power for free and technologies there are ep epically better than what Tesla's time were in the early 1900s or even Marconi in 1930s and Dr. Reif and Brown 40s 60s way better tech what with what we have now we can, everybody could have free power in their house for free and uh, we have they have to reset everything because it's, it's at the end there's no more money to be made really except in the destruction of the system right now there's no more growth. I understand. We're the end of the growth. And there's a lot of books being written on this. The Fourth Turning is one of my favorites. If you can read a book called The Fourth Turning, it'll take you through all these cycles. But here's the interesting thing. The cycles that are matching up now, not only do we get the end of the generational cycle, which is after the fourth generations, things spin. This is the fourth turning, if you will, matching right now. Uh, the solar cycles are matching now to bring us into a at least 400-year low in solar activity. I personally believe it's something around a 2,000-year low or more. And all these cycles are wrapping in on each other. And then if we go back to the ancients, they're, you know, I've, uh, as you've heard since the last 20 years, like all these gigantic cycles are lo you know, loading on top of this. So there's heavier, more powerful cycles interlooping with the society cycle, the civilization cycle, the debt cycle, and the uh, economy cycle, all culminating right now, which has never happened before, at least in the last 2,000 years of time. So, you know, we're back into a grander cycle, and I'll leave it there. You can take what you like out of that. Things are going to shift. Cryptocurrency, I might add that. That's going to be the new money for at least the interim step. It won't be the final step. Hashgraph, maybe, but blockchain for now and crypto will be the new uh, way to keep us buy, selling, and trading as everything else collapses around us. Brilliant, David. Thanks very much. It's, uh, there's so much to say. I don't know where to start. You, you, you really, you, you, um, you, you explain the lattice and the tapestry of it all very well and how it ties in because this is what a lot of people don't understand. You know, you were in China, you know a lot about um, what happened with the old dynasties and that, which I'd like to ask you about in a minute. But what I, first thing I want to say is before people, I know people are going to be thinking, as I talk about this a lot, is there's this dynamic in people. It's like they wouldn't do that to us. They wouldn't do that. They wouldn't kill Kennedy. They wouldn't do 9 11. They wouldn't do this. But you know, they wouldn't kill us for profit, you know. And I think there's a big block there. A, a lot of people that will watch in this will know about what you're talking about. And a lot of people will be thinking, well, surely uh, they wouldn't do that. They, they, they want the best for us. They're our mums and dads. It's like, honestly, it infuriates me how people still believe. I mean, in here, like the Queen's there, people just look at it. Oh, and she's got a few people, democracy, Labour, Conservative. It's the same thing, really, and many years ago, we would have all had our heads chopped off a long time ago. So let's get it clear, everybody. They don't care about you. They just want profit and, and everything. You've been to the Georgia Guidestones, uh, you told me, you know. And I, I enjoyed what you said about the printing press um, in one of your talks, um, um, David, before we go into the whole cycles, uh, about blocking people and shutting people down. And um, I'm still really interested that this whole thing is so vehemently against anyone talking about this thing. Something huge is going on, you know, something huge. Well, I call it a society reset button, and that's purely what it is, because all these cycles culminating, again, they're going to want to cut the uh, flow of information. Now, China's, follow what China's doing to cut the flow of information. They're quite good at what they're doing to stop protests and interconnectivity of people across the country fighting for the same whatever it is against a, a new chemical factory going into their cities, um, 
you know, new mining. It's, uh, you know, taking away the homes to build up something where the government officials are then skimming the money and only the government officials get rich, but all the locals lost their land and their homes. And, you know, th there's a lot of interconnectivity and the same issues across China. You know, you could probably get any one time if you had a real chat board that was open, there'd be 50 groups across, you know, the provinces of China all talking the same thing, hundreds of thousands of people. But China has cut that to make literally everybody an island. So when we move forward with this and there's crop shortages and, you know, maybe food riots in some cities, I don't know if they're going to want you to be explaining all this. So I, I see the social credit score, you know, coming into the West more like China's social credit system. Uh, I can see, your, and I can't, everybody can see what's happening with the uh, censorship across social media right now. I mean, this is the cusp of where it's going to stop the flow of info. And you brought up the Gutenberg printing press there. And the quick story is, if you go back into the 1600s and 1700s, as, as the Gutenberg printing press was becoming more popular, the Turkish Ottoman Empire, especially in the 1800s, was like, you can't bring that thing in here and print your own information and give information to people. We control all flow of information. So if you were caught with anything from that printing press, even if you had like a cue from the press that you just had and you maybe you bought it in Italy and you're wearing it as a necklace like, hey, I went to Italy. Look what I found. I found this part of the printing press and I bought it. Just because you were trying to prevent or, you know, purvey some information, they wanted to prevent you so heavily from sharing that. And what happened is they became an island of just the same echo chamber for over a century. And then when they emerged later, everybody had advanced 100 years. And they're like, whoa, we're left behind. Like, you look at Turkey right now. They used to lead the world in so many innovations, economy, trade. But now look at Turkey. They're, they're I mean, I'm not going to say nothing, but it's not, it's a, it's a shell of its former self. And you look at China, too, when they had the opium war and then they closed off their complete isolationist, you know, you look at China, how isolationist they went for over a century. And then once they emerged, you know, you got... British troops firing cannons at the doorstep there, and they were so far behind, so, so far behind, because they did the same thing. They wanted no foreign influence. They didn't want anybody to adopt foreign anything, innovation technology, and they locked up for a whole century, and boy, did they get knocked open again. And uh, same thing with, uh, you know, Turkey. So I can see everybody going with new innovative techniques to communicate, and I was saying we might go old school where people will have ham radios, we might go old school where people will start using the dark web to purvey their information. You know, how many ways could we do it? I mean, basic CB radios. You know, maybe people will just have to go back to podcasting and radio broadcasting uh, to get around the sensors that are online. Wouldn't that be amazing that if we have to go back into radio broadcasting to give the information out because we can't put it on the uh, actual Internet, then we have to go back to the airwaves again. It would be just like a big circle. It would be a cycle again, a communication cycle perhaps. Oh, well said, David. Um, I was the, the gen lovely gentleman comes in and he'd be watching this show. Hello, and um, I, I appreciate his support. He comes in the studio quite a bit, and he's he's got a place. Uh, he's got a building, a little eco house. He's on his own down there. His family's turned against him. He's the nut of the family, and he was talking to me and saying that even though he's got that there, it's still lonely because still not enough people are saying, "Look, we've got to escape this this paradigm." I hate that word, but we've got to escape this paradigm and and, and become. Um, more reliant and escape the clutches of, of government again you know government for me is a sickness and it, and it's, it i know it's, it's useful as well i know we, we you've talked about that but in its current form um it's doing it's doing a, a lot of damage the government the government's the best is the government the government's the least generally for me but until we can escape i think there's a race can we escape the clutches uh, is a race to the tape, really, for me, and create our own systems and get enough people to come forward. I was talking to someone the other day. My street where I live, David, if everyone sold their houses on their street, that street, there's £5 million there. That could buy five farms with 100 acres each. But they're all still there, hearing each other fart and have sex and argue in the night and with their little back gardens and their t little cars on their drives. So it's almost like David Icke's been going on about for years, this divide and conquer thing, isn't it, that keeps people apart. And, and people fear criticism so much. And they also, we we're talking in the studio today with people, they fear, someone was saying, I want to do something different, but they fear criticism, they fear failure, they feel suppression, they feel incarceration. 
So it's almost like, well, I'll carry on doing what I'm doing, even though I'm a slave, and even though I, I'm persecuted and I'm being suppressed, as long as I don't do anything wrong or say anything wrong, I might just get by till I get to my coffin, you know? People have got to break free of that, and it almost feels to me that there's got to be a few things rocking before people go, oh my God, what are we going to do? Like the supermarket shut, like we'll, go, we'll talk about in a minute, and there's nothing on the shelves. You know, everyone will be running down to the wild John who I know you're and saying, John, you said we can pick stuff. What should we do? So do you see what, how do you see that going? I mean, we'll talk about the cycles then in a minute. Well, at that point, it's far too late. And your friend John probably will lock up shop, close up the border and be like, don't talk to me. It was way too late. Noah's Ark hanging here. You know, it'll, it'll be, <laughs> yeah, it'll be exactly like that. It'll be a tidal wave of humans just freaking and uh, just in total panic and fear and terror. Because imagine if you got, try to get to the store, okay, you and I, as a, as a male individual, you know, we'd have our own set of things to go through and trying to figure this all out if we were unprepared. Now, imagine if you have a wife and two kids and they don't know what's going on and they're not eating. So what are you going to do to feed your family? You know, this is the point where it starts to get tumultuous and without the preparation. And again, the, I, I like to identify these powers that be and you know, could call them they. It's such a broad stroke on everything. But who would the they be? You know, if you can start to identify the playing parties that are pushing these narratives. So again, we come up to the UN, the IPCC, and everything else with the NGO spectrum going down like that pyramid David Ike talks about. And every everybody in there, inside there, is pushing the same narrative because they have to say the same narrative or else they lose their position. So now everybody's bound by money. Now, do they really believe? what they're talking about perhaps not perhaps there's a 50 percent of them that don't believe it but they say what they need to to continue to have that position so they can have their money to have the house you're talking about with the little nifty car in front but when we do come back uh, the governments have done a very good job of pers you know, dissuading anybody from self-sufficiency you know oh no you can't have a garden for example in the united states here there's so many ordinances where you cannot grow vegetables to eat in your front yard has to be remain like ornamental plants and grass. And then there's other states where you can't even collect your own rainwater. If you do collect your own rainwater, uh, you're fined and they can confiscate your property, put liens on your home and actually kick you out of your own home because you're collecting the water because they feel that the rain would fall. And if you didn't collect it, it would go into a stream and then it would go down somewhere and they could sell the water rights to a farm or a factory or something. <laughs> It's but the minuscule amount that you would collect, of well, how many hundreds of gallons, you know, if it rained, but they made that illegal. So everywhere you're looking across the whole spectrum, they've dissuaded everybody from... Shackles, shackles. Yeah, and even when you come to the farmer's markets, it used to be kind of a freewheeling. If you had anything that you grew, you could sell it at the market. Now they want everybody to have a permit. You got to get this cleanliness, uh, FICO sanitary permits. You need to show revenue. They have to register as a business. So that's expensive for people that are just have an extra 10 heads of lettuce that they grew through the week. So this whole growing your own food and being able to share it as a market economy where if you can grow extra, you can like sell it on the weekend, trade it. Now here's the most insane thing. Let's say you have 10 heads of lettuce and you want to trade it for, I don't know, a box. And like you're going to move and I go, hey, I got some lettuce and you have a bunch of empty boxes. Let's trade that. Now the government wants you to put a value on it and then pay the tax on your bartering here. This is how insane it's gone to. So the self-sufficiency of even being able to barter for an item after you've grown your own food, it's still nanny state is right in the middle of that, and they want you to pay every step of the way. So you can see how they've pushed us away from self-sufficiency for the last 40 years. You know, during World War II, you know, you know, both of our countries, it was always about the victory garden, grow hemp, grow this to support the war effort, grow as many veggies as you can so all the extra canned food can go overseas to the troops. Whatever happened to that? Like, people had acre gardens, like almost every American home grew as much food as they could, extra, 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 to even give to the war effort to send to the troops. And now after the war ended, it was all like, no, don't grow anything, go to the supermarket. Supermarket has better quality. Supermarket's cleaner, because you see how they have that, pla that fancy plastic wrap around it. You don't need to grow your own stuff, it's just easier to go to the market and get it. And heaven forbid talking about chickens, goats, or rabbits or anything on your farm or your, or your backyard where you could have a meat source or a pond with turtles. Oh, he killed a turtle. He's animal cruelty. You need to arrest the person that killed a turtle to eat out of their pond. Oh, it's just like this. It's so nanny state and self-sufficiency of your own protein sources. You can't do it. Raw milk, can't have raw milk. Oh, they come in SWAT teams now to uh, close down local farms that have 
cows or goats offering raw milk, which means unpasteurized, because it's such a health threat. And, you know, it's so, it's so borderline absurd here the way they're pushing everybody away from self-sufficiency. They want you to get back into the gargantuan machine as much as they can. And if they're losing 20 bucks per person because you're growing your own food, they're multiplying that per week times person times X times X on their bottom line. And they're saying, well, they're losing too much money. Every cent you make has to be put back in the system. No self-sufficiency for you, my friends. It'll be outlawed. Yeah. Already is being. Yeah. Sad, yeah. isn't it? Yeah, it's 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 but it's it's a funny time to be on the planet, David. I know we're we're coming to other things in a minute, but it's good to put put a bit of a thing here. Base camp. It's very sad. It's 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 tragic, comical, and the but it's also so exciting. At last, I mean, we spoke about this earlier. I know I know I'm here on the planet for the right time to talk about what I talk about and write about my books. And like you write about your book, let's just flash your book up on the screen. I'm sorry, David. I should have done that in the beginning. That's climate rev. End of it is the solution section, which I think is the best. You know, a lot of the explaining the cycles and how the sun works and uh, the minimums and the way the solar cycles work, ebbs and flows of history, great civilization cycles, awesome. But it's more about the solutions end of the book, which I found, uh, which I think is the most valuable. Yeah. But well, you know, put your book up there too, because you know, to have two resources for people to draw from, that, that's the key. It's about information sharing. Okay, here's mine: the emergency transformation of human beings as the solution mm -hmm. to the world's problems. And when I wrote that book seven years ago, I, th I, I thought people are going to think I'm imagine, uh, um, uh, 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 exaggerating Another. the emergency. <laughs> Here's another nutcase, you know. And my, of course, my family still think I'm a nutcase. And I think you've got to be a bit of a nutcase to talk about this stuff in one sense and put your head above the parapet. But, you know, back to what we were just saying about people, um, about people and how they feel, David. I think there's such a consciousness and a, con a revolution of conscience, consciousness. Hong Kong is a good example. And it's almost like they won't, I can see that they're not going to stop until something's done. But I, I, I get people come in here and, and, and on a very positive note here for people. I never used to get this. I've had this studio for eight years and now more and more and more I'm feeling people coming in. And it seems I don't necessarily initiate the conversation. It's just like they want to talk about what they feel. And most people secretly feel completely in despair and at their wits end because every day they've got to go into the mental asylum system which the symptoms of depression and despair that's what it's doing to them and then natural symptoms it's, it's i had a therapist in here today who helps people with transformation and she said the, the same thing people have uh, uh, feel in such secret despair they don't talk about it so when we start now is the time to talk to people about how the system is how it's designed because what it makes people realize then is, is maybe they don't get so angry and say, don't tell me I've been fooled for 50 years or 30 years and I'm, I'm, I've been lied to and cheated and I was, and, and are you telling me and I, I was an idiot and I didn't see this? Well, no, I'm not saying you're an idiot, an idiot. It's just you didn't see it. It's okay. You know, walk into a prison and say, can you see the wall, you idiot? Can you see the wall? Because often you only know that it's a prison when you start trying to escape like the Hong Kong people and like the people in France. Or when you start talking about it and down comes YouTube on you or your family attack you or whatever. It's a fantastic time to be alive now because more and more in this studio, I'm getting people coming in and saying, Oh my God, I really feel it. I want to talk about it. And I say, yeah, you should feel like that. That's a natural way to feel. Don't fight it. Sure, you don't want to stay like it. And also, you don't want to stay in the system and transform yourself like F. Eckhart Tolle and those wonderful people are saying. You don't want to transform your system and find peace again within a system. If you're going to stay in the same system, it will help. And I'm going to do programs on that next week. But you want to then use that extra energy to try and transform the system transform yourself first and then build another system uh, a parallel to the one that's collapsing which if you don't then guess what when that one collapses it's too late it's going to fall right on your head and when the supermarkets are shut and you're running around picking dandelion leaves in the street and people want to eat your kids then you know, then, 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 I mean, getting fresh water is just a huge thing, David. I, I gave one a mem member of my family this morning. I put some uh, water from a tap and squeezed it in a plastic bottle so they could smell it. And they said, it's like the swimming pool. I said, it is the swimming pool. So people are under a barrage of attacks, which is making them feel terrible. But ironically, as we both know, it's that suppression and that dumbing down, which is the very thing that is is bringing people around from the chloroform it's like a pillow the harder is pressed on humanity's face and the more desperate people become and better still like 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 your work so much david because you cover all areas 
and you're giving people solutions. You're saying, look, this is a real opportunity. You know, uh, we can see this coming, this change with crop failures and things. We can make the most of this and out of that collapse, we can create a new paradigm. Otherwise, when it does collapse, the government will just step in. Everyone will be like Oliver Twist with their balls. Oh my God, what are we going to do? We're helpless. Well, we say, we told you, you had a chance and opportunity to, to create stuff. Do what David's saying in his books. Start growing your own food. Come together as, as like a family, a global family. Don't be divided and conquered, you know. It's a very exciting time for humanity. But like you said, it's happened again and again and again. And people, people are saying, well, what's, what's the global, you know, the global thing that David's talking about? I, you know the 400 year, th 400 year thing with China is that that's why China's buying up Africa right David you were, we were talking about it earlier on with getting the rebels out and that 